Hey guys, so this is just a quick um, review of this Rush FPV Tank Ultimate Mini VTX. Um, Bankrupt sent me this, so thanks for that. Um, and I'm using it in my micro long range concept. Um, so we will do a little uh, power test and I'll um, walk you through the features of this VTX. So let's take a closer look. All right, so as you can see, this is a 20 by 20 mounting pattern, which is really cool in my opinion because we are moving more and more towards 20 by 20 especially on 5 inch so this makes it possible to stack this VTX uh, on top of a board which is really the cleanest solution you can get in my opinion. Now um, this is an 800 milliwatt it's specified as 800 milliwatt which also is a lot of power so this is pretty much long range capable. Um, what I really like it's got this nice these nice clean soldering pads here for everything you need. Of course it comes with smart audio, it does uh, TBS smart audio. It takes up to 8S, which um, I mean in my opinion isn't really necessary, but it's good that it's got some uh, some margin. Uh, so it should be fine handling 6S without any issues. And now the nice thing about this VTX um, in my opinion is it's one of the, I mean apart from uh, one that Maytag ma makes um, I hadn't found VTXs so far where I can use these buttons switching the bands and channel and power in a way that isn't super annoying. Uh, but on this one they found a really good solution uh, to make this happen. Uh, so I'll quickly show you how to change um, the band channel and power on this VTX. Right now there are two buttons here. This one is for bands and channels, the one up front, and this one is for the power. So. If I plug this in, you can see that they have some pretty neat indicator lights here. So blinking means one, steady light means two, these orange ones are the channel and this one is the band. Let me see if I didn't get those confused. Uh, yeah, it's it's uh, it's correct. We have channel in red or orange, and in blue we have the band. So you just add them up. A solid one means two. A blinking one means one. So I have um, band three, channel one, and I just short press this button here to flip through the channels and long press it to switch through the band. That's pretty neat in my opinion and you can easily spot um, which band in general you're on and also it just looks kind of cool. It's like an LED strip. Now for the power, same thing. So this is, um, I don't know if you can see this, this is kind of a bluish purple light. This is 800 milliwatts. If I push this, green is 25. Orange is 200, red is 500 milliwatts. Super easy, really well done by Rush. So far so good. Let's do a little power test to see how much this VTX actually output, uh, outputs. And please keep in mind this isn't super scientific. Um, also the VTX doesn't have any airflow, it's heating up. So, um, but let's see, let's see what kind of results we get. I uh, will just plug this in and you can see it live much power we have so it started up I think that's the highest power level just switch this on 25 milliwatts so we have around 20 milliwatts which is okay this is above the legal limit uh, below the legal limit so that's fine it switched up to 200 uh, 170 roughly that's still okay 500 now I think we're starting to see kind of a gap this is only 300 but it might also heat up 800 only 450 uh, no, that's kind of disappointing. Um, not the full power I expected. And it keeps going down, but that's because it's heating up. I'll switch it back to uh, 250, not to overheat it. Now, I have to say this is a used VTX. I gave this a few flights already. Um, it has seen a few crashes, one of which ripped out the MMCX connector of the antenna, so it might have taken some damage. Um, but... I'd be surprised if that just makes the power level go lower. Uh, usually it would just completely burn out and not uh, take a little damage. So looks like it doesn't fully supply the power, but this is still quite a lot. 
and it's pretty steady so it doesn't get as hot as other VTXs do. I mean on an Ishii Nano for example you have the same power levels for a short amount of time but it just gets as hot as the sun after seconds and um, starts to regulate itself down and you lose your, uh, your power levels. And now finally to finish up this video a few words about my micro long range concept you can see here on these 3.8 inch uh, King Kong props. I drilled those out to two millimeters to fit the Kebab FP or MX collaboration 1303 4800 kV motors. Uh, surprisingly, they have no jello at all. It works pretty well to drill those, no problems. Um, it's super smooth. The, uh, so I, what I'm doing right now is um, trying what kind of battery I can use here doing the first few test flights. And I'm sorry I don't have any flight footage because to be honest I just don't have anything that is nearly worth sharing. Um, we had pretty bad weather today. It was almost stormy, super windy, so everything is shaky. Um, it just doesn't look very good. But overall um, this thing has very good flight characteristics. I was expecting to run it on 2S but finally seems like 3S is absolutely fine. So it's, it's really surprisingly agile and freestyle capable on 3S. It still gets pretty good flight times um, on a... Uh, I was flying a 650 3S. This is what worked best so far. And I got easily four minutes moving at a pretty uh, pretty fast pace. So I was covering quite a lot of distance. And so it seems to be pretty efficient. And I was actually surprised that this thing can cover that much distance easily. It's got a rather high cruising speed or at least higher than any three inch toothpick and surprisingly high for its weight so that worked out pretty well um another surprise was i mean i was trying this big 1500 milliamp hour 2s hoping to get really good flight times and surprisingly i hardly got more flight time out of this than out of a 650 2s which is not even half as much capacity but it that that does just doesn't make any sense to me i can only um, assume that the weight just puts too much load on these props um, and makes the whole thing go inefficient because I mean these are props for a microing I don't know if they are um, maybe inefficient if they get too much load um, but I will get the new HQ T mount 4 inch props soon, the HQ T4 by 2.5. So I'm really looking forward to try those on um, on this setup. And I think they will give this um, an even bigger performance boost. But for now, um, this works really well. And to be honest, the most impressive thing about this is the noise level. I mean, you can literally, literally not hear this thing. So when I arm it, I have to take a look at it to see if the prop spin because I just can't hear it. And even when it flies, um, it's just impossible to hear it after it's just a few couple of dozen meters away. So this is by far the quietest quad I have ever flown. And this is exactly what I wanted to do with this, have something um, that doesn't draw attention that you can cruise around in the city and this is exactly what I did. Um, nobody looked up, nobody turned their heads. This is working pretty well so um, I, I still have to do a lot of testing on this and I will do more videos but for now um, I, I still have to have to figure a few things out. Um, try a few more batteries because I think I can go a slightly bigger than the 650 3S. Um, also trying out different antenna combinations. I mean, so far I was uh, today in a was a, in a pretty high multipath environment. So the um, new XC2 worked extremely well, although it looks a bit odd. <laughs> little little ball here uh, suspended on that wire. But yeah, um, I'll keep you guys updated probably uh, next weekend or during the next week. I will have some more updates and probably video footage if the weather isn't too bad um all right i i find i hope you found this useful guys um don't forget to subscribe and stay tuned for more